everybody. Welcome to another Insane, Pro Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach Mastermind. As uh, my co-host today, we have Todd Brooksfan back. What's up, my brother? You know, so good to uh, be back with the, with the crew here. So I'm looking forward to uh, catching up and uh, hearing what everyone's got going on. Right on. And we also have a, a mentor who's been through this program multiple times, one of the country's top branch managers and a great personal friend, Dave Gallegos. What's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? I uh, I was just think I was just saying the reason I'm I need to get back on this is because I need a tune-up, and so um, I'm going to go back through the whole program again. But um, I thought this would be a great place to do it. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's it's great to have you. And and by the way, folks, so we've been talking about it for a month now. We are finally, as of next week, promoting this call to the entire mortgage coach community. So uh, it's gone from concept to execution. I saw some of the promotion, and and then also heads up everyone. If you go to the Mortgage Coach website uh, right now, and you go to the calendar, there you'll see uh, insane productivity um, being marketed. So Todd and I are going to be working to more formalize this, invite other special guests, but there will be a place every Friday for you to become insanely productive. So with that said, Todd. Do you have any um, topics or strategies you want to make sure we cover today before we open up up to the audience and start asking questions? You know, I would lo I love this idea of a tune-up, right? So I was out of the out of town slash out of the country for the last two weeks, and so you know, anytime uh, you know you have a unique experience like I had, you know, it happens just because it happens. But you know, here's Dave, who I respect immensely, who's you know a leader in the mortgage community. A uh, friend of Darren's, been through all sorts of different um, of insane productivity and other type stuff, saying he needs a tune-up as well. And so, you know, I love that that idea. Maybe we can sort of talk through, you know, how do you get back on the horse, you know, when, you, when you've fallen off. And sometimes, you know, it could be, you know, me, I'm kind of two and a half weeks off the horse from all of my travels and uh, really focused actually starting this morning. I'm trying to spend some time getting my morning routine back into shape now that the jet lag is is over and uh, would love to hear from Dave sort of what, you know, what, what his plan is. How does, how does, what does a tune-up look like to you? Well, and that's, it, 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 that's exactly what happened to me. I was in a, we had a, we've just had a really, I had an unbelievably travel intensive month of May. I was out of, I, I, my wife and I were talking about it. When I got home, I went on a motorcycle, I went on a fun motorcycle uh, road trip uh, last week that was 2,300 miles in five days. When I got home Thursday night, I had missed, I had not been home, and this is, I don't travel for business, right? I had not been home 12 nights out of 20, whatever, that's, what was that, the 25th, uh, 12 nights out of 25. I had not been home in the month of May, and that just throws things off. It just does, and uh, uh, when I got back, and as much as I, um, except for the road trip, I still stayed current with the things that, and that's what's so cool about having a written routine that you know you're going to, um, you know your bookends, the written bookends, still such a powerful thing. And fortunately, I didn't miss much, except for when I was on the road trip. I didn't miss any workouts, which is something that you know for our health and our you know in, in productivity and sleeping and everything else is so important. Um, but what I have missed, and that's why this tune-up is going to be so important, is I want to go through it again and why I, you know, I I contacted Dave a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, I want to get back into this. So if you're if you'll have me. Because um, I need it, and um, the uh, uh, you know I've started missing like the end of the book, the end of the day bookends is what I've been missing. I haven't been preparing. Okay, here's what I'm working on tomorrow. I haven't been doing those types of things. And what happens to me anyway? And I don't know about anyone else, but what happens to me is you can get by doing that stuff. It's not that complicated. You can just get by. We all get by because we're in the mortgage business. We got ADD and we do a million things and you know, multitasking, which is impossible, and all those things that we do that we know we shouldn't be doing, and it works because, you know, it's not like anything breaks down, but it's just a matter of time before something will, and I know that, and so it's like, man, I got to get this, it just because I start to feel out of control, and that's the difference for me, so that's what, that's that's the point. No, and I love it. I, I think it's, um, you know, A, kudos to you for hitting the road for 2,300 miles for five days because I think, <laughs> you know, it's such a challenge in this business. I think it's everyone's biggest fear is, you know, that whole, what do they call it? FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. And so someone who can, who can do that at your level, uh, you know, congrats. That's, um, that's awesome. And I think the transparency is great because I think it's uh, most of the time people don't fall a hundred percent off. You know, you fall off 
you know, at least what I've observed in a smaller percentage. And uh, and so I think when you have that ability to, to notice, okay, it's my evening routine, and it's just so funny. I think I've said it on this call before. I heard Daniel Harkavy speaking earlier this year, and he said, your morning routine starts the night before. And, and you know, again, I've yeah. always known you bookend your day. We've talked about that so many times on this call. But what, whatever he said that day or however he said it just was this huge, you know, light bulb that went off in my head of, you know, that's, there's no doubt. You're, you're, if you don't go to bed right, if you don't wind down right, if you don't really set your intentions for the next day, the night before, you're not really going to have the best morning routine. You could have a great one, but the best one starts the night before. So um, I, I love that. Yeah. I think it's, and that's where I, you know, like leaving the office, one of the things that I, I have, it's in my calendar and it pops up and I, too often I'm clearing this task without doing it, which is, you know, plan tomorrow. And, you know, it's just I've been skipping it. And that's like, you know, it's just dangerous because when you're not intentional, when I'm, for me anyway, if I'm not intentional about what I'm going to do, then I'll do whatever just showed up. And, you know, it's just not productive. No, I love it. Well, Dave, I, don't... I think a lot of us do that. Yeah, and Dave, yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're not the only one that has that challenge. And thanks for the transparency and bringing that topic to hand. Uh, perfectly willing to keep that topic going, but also do want to open it up to the community. I, I see we've got some incredible leaders on this call. Uh, Bliss, I have unmuted you. How are you doing this morning, Bliss? I'm great. I've been gone for a while, too, so it's nice to be back. Yeah, well, it's good, to, it's good to have you in the community. And again, Bliss is someone who was part of the founding group. She went through this when we first rolled it out with Darren. Uh, she even went and saw Darren to one of his live events. I know you've gone pretty deep. So I guess I'll, two questions. One, any questions or topics for today? And then knowing that we're opening this to a broader audience of mortgage coach leaders, any, any suggestions for special guests that we might want to bring in or big topics for for this next couple, let's just say through the end of the month, does anything come to mind that you want to talk about today or something that, you know, could be a bigger topic or a special guest that we bring in in future weeks? Anything sure. come to mind? So I love, I actually love the recalibrating just because I, I actually take quite a few vacations a year and that always does throw me off. I kind of get off track with my morning routine and you're playing catch up, you've got jet lag. Um, you know, and it's, I always do it during the busiest months because that's when my husband can travel. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. So yeah, how do we get back into a routine instead of just reacting when we've kind of maybe stepped off for whatever reason? So yeah, that's a great topic. As far as going forward, when you're going to have a lot of new people listening in. Now, are you inviting them to go through insane productivity or just, hey, be part of this community even if you haven't done that? Correct. Yeah, the, the vision is that it's a bigger opportunity to just, Friday is about productivity. Now, okay. we will, every, every Friday, we'll, we will promote it. We'll remind people that if you haven't been through the program, that is a common theme. You know, call it a foundation at Mortgage Coach, we believe that that's just, you know, it's great sure. training for every mortgage professional. And then the people that are leaders, you know, Todd, myself, people like you that are mentors, that are leaders of this, you won't be a leader on this call if you have not been through the program and, sure. and also be super successful in the business. So all the leadership of this weekly call will be in same productivity graduates. I like that. Yeah, so I think just taking different people and finding out what have they, because the, the the problem, if you want to use that word with insane productivity, is there's so much, right? You cannot implement it all. You would fail if you tried to. So what did you take from it? What did you go maybe a little bit deeper on? Um, you know, for me, that was probably a lot of tracking, a lot of things that I'm just making sure I'm doing all of those small things that have a big effect over time. Um, Jam sessions are fabulous. I have not been great at those, right? But even just this morning, I'm thinking, all right, um, one of the new things I want to start doing is writing up testimonials for real estate agents I have worked with um, and then sending that to them and saying, hey, where would you like me to post this? Do you want me to do it on Facebook? Do you want me to do it on – where do you want me to do this? And by the way, would you mind giving me a testimonial? So, right, so now I am dedicating a jam session once a week 
to creating um, two to three testimonials for realtors so I can get through my realtors. So that ties back into insane productivity and how do I make the time to do these tasks that have don't have any urgency to them. And so, so by, yeah. by the way, so by the way, that is boom. That is a huge idea where one is, I, I can tell that you, you will close more loans. You will be more respected by your current customers. I mean, just about everything that a, you know, apex player in our business does that will add value to. And then I love the way you tied that back into insane productivity. So I, I don't want to just fly by that. I, I do want to like, you don't mind really talk about that. Oh, sure. Uh, but, but before we go deeper on it though, I do want folks to recognize that I just posted a question in our Facebook page. So, you know, do you have a suggestion for a topic or a guest speaker for June or July? If you have someone that you would like Todd and I to invite to this call, and if you have a topic that you'd like us to go deep on, again, it does have to have the theme of productivity. You know, we, you know, on Tuesdays, I talk about sales strategies. I talk about inspiration. Uh, you know, we have different week, days of the week that we do different things. Friday is about productivity, you know, how to do things faster, how to get, how to be more effective, how to be more efficient in executing your business. So if you have a topic, please share that either during the call or after the call. Um, and now, again, before I just hijack it and ask you to go deeper, Todd, is there <laughs> well, any, it, I actually just um, put a thing on the Facebook page that you just posted, a roundtable of people giving their ideas and, and their Oper, you know, mode of operation when they go on vacation because some people disconnect completely, some do it part way, some don't disconnect at all. And there's no right or wrong, but it's vacation season. Let's hear from people what do you do and how does it work for you? So that's just one topic idea for June or July. Uh, that Consider that added. We're probably not going to do that today, although who knows? No. Maybe we'll, have to, <laughs> to, well I, I don't know. I mean, that's, we could start that today. Uh, Todd, before we have Bliss unpack her testimonial strategy, is there any questions or commentary you have? Well, I just loved it because I'm friends with Bliss on Facebook, so I did watch her bike trip. Didn't she just like a bike trip across Ireland or something? Is that where you were? Well, I'll, yeah, I was in Ireland and I biked a little bit. Yes, it was awesome. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, no, and I love it. I mean, Dave, you picked up on exactly what I did. I put a big arrow and a big star next to that, write testimonials for your realtors and ask them where you want to post it. I mean, again, what a, we all know, because we've talked about it before on this call, that right now, I mean, the whole social media review piece is, is huge. It's been, you know, the biggest thing for a long time, and I think most of us travel and go places. I know, Dave, when you were in Scottsdale and we had dinner, you're like, hey, these places downtown all have great Yelp reviews, and we picked a restaurant that, you know, I gave you a couple restaurants to choose from. You went to Yelp, and you liked one, the pictures of one the best or whatever it was you liked about the review the best. And so what a, what a great way to, A, cement yourself to your partners, and um, B, in theory, probably get some reciprocity where they will, they will do it as well. So I, I would just love to take your, steal your question and throw it back at Bliss to talk about what that's going to look like. Well, so I – just had the idea this morning. I mean, I, I, it's not a new idea, right? Um, but my production manager, we were talking about um, getting testimonials from our clients. And in my checklist that I've had forever in a day, my after closing checklist, there's one line item that says realtor testimonial. And she's like, what did you mean by that? Do you mean, am I, because she helps me with my after closing tasks. She says, am I supposed to get a testimonial from them or do we want to give them one? And I'm like, I've been ignoring that because we just have been busy and, you know, sometimes you just don't do everything you should be doing. And so we just kind of brainstormed what we want to do. And I know I have about four places when I ask for testimonials. I give people a choice of four different places. They can put a testimonial. So I've got Zillow, Google, Facebook, or they can just send it to me in an email. Um, so I want to be able to give to the realtor um, a testimonial and put it where they want to be most visible. And I recently had one of my clients actually do all four things. And so, you know, to find out where they want it to go and offer to put it in multiple places. The other, I don't even remember where, it might have been on one of these calls, someone said that they go into LinkedIn and they... Um, write a recommendation for a realtor on, on LinkedIn because how LinkedIn works, if I understand it correctly, 
when you do that, the system asks them to reciprocate. I'll be honest with you, my problem is I don't see a lot of value in LinkedIn. And that's me and it's probably because I don't delve enough into it and I just have to keep things streamlined or I'm not going to do it. Um, and so back when, probably last year sometime, I did a couple of those for realtors and I really didn't see anything come back. And so I'm personally not going to do LinkedIn. I'm going to, you know, stick with trying to find, unless they ask me to do LinkedIn. So probably, you know, Google Reviews, Zillow, Facebook, some of them use this other app. I can't remember what it's called. But um, I want to speak their language that helps their clients as much as possible. And so, yeah, that's that's where I'm coming that, from. That makes, uh, it makes sense. Uh, the, 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 Review channels that I hear the most are Google, Yelp, and Zilla. Uh, by the way, folks, this is a great conversation. Uh, so if you are doing um, testimonials for agents uh, and you have one you want to share, I'm going to start a topic in our Facebook group here in just a minute and would love to have you share some samples. You know, maybe share I a link. I love that. Because the problem, yeah, so why I'm setting a goal to do two to three a week is because I need to make them unique, right? I need to make it unique. And if I were to sit down and try to do 10 or 12 right now, I'd run a, it, I need to put a lot of thought into it because I want it to be, you know, maybe specific to the last couple transactions we've done or a scenario where they went above and beyond to help a client. Um, you know, so I, I think this is going to take some thought and some time, which is why it's perfect for a jam session when you've turned everything else off, because I want them to know I spent time thinking about what I want to say to help promote their business. Les, I think this is love. a great idea. I love this idea. I'm sitting here writing notes. Um, <laughs> but I think you could also, you're right, it would be challenging to come up with something unique every time, but, but, but I bet you you could build yourself a template that was uh, referencing because sure. you're right, you, you could build a template that you could create so you'd maybe follow the same format and it wouldn't take you as long and you're, you point out something unique about the specific transaction that you're referencing section so like maybe it's like two, two or three sentences where you've got to fill in 50% of the information for each sentence or something like that. I, that would be my suggestion but what a great idea. I want to tell all yeah. my salespeople it's like going, hey, <laughs> so good, thanks. Yeah, and hopefully you see that them reciprocate you know and it's just my goal is to be in front of them in a variety of ways whether it be a text a phone call in person to me this is a whole different way that uh, puts me in front of them with some value so I'm excited to do it hold my feet well, to the fire yep. ask me next time about it <laughs> all right all right so first of all if you have written a testimonial for a realtor and you're willing to share and contribute to our community please share that in the comment section of the Facebook group. If you are on this call or you're listening to the recording and you haven't um, been approved, you know, feel free. You, know, you can search Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach Mastermind on Facebook, and we have a, a private group that I approve everybody that goes into that group. So you know, we, we don't have spammers. We just have serious mortgage professionals that want to improve their productivity. But, but most importantly, share samples. You know, where this community gets valuable is when you guys help each other. So, you know, Bliss, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you don't mind, um, in comments after this call, not going to ask you to multitask, but if you wouldn't mind sharing a sample or two, uh, and anybody else that's listening to this conversation right now, um, share a sample of a testimonial that you've provided and anything that you help think would help this community. Also, I want to I want to tie it back to the fact that you know notice that the way um, Bliss got this done is she scheduled a jam session on her calendar. She made this a topic, a clear goal, and a topic within that jam session, and she's getting it done. So you know, great insane productivity strategy. Bliss, anything else on this topic you want to add um, before we kind of move on to some others? No, I think that's good. I'm excited to see what other people share as well. So great thought on that. Okay, and then if anybody on this call has a question for Bliss or wants to contribute to this topic, you can either post a question in GoToMeeting or you can raise your hand and myself or Todd will call on you. Um, Todd, is there any closing thoughts on this before we move on to another topic? Well, I'm just hoping that somebody here who is a LinkedIn 
fan, LinkedIn user, whether it's on a you know small level or a huge level, maybe would raise their hand and we can um, get their feedback on it because I like Bliss. I'm not a huge user of it. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn and you know I get those people who say like you know Todd's a good coach, Todd's a good mortgage guy. Like I see those kind of reviews come in and and I don't know. I've never used it myself. I know I got a sister-in-law who's a recruiter. I know that she lives on LinkedIn and it's great for that. I know that, you know, in my origination days that I have people who would look at my profile on LinkedIn when they were referred to me. So I do know some people do go there. Uh, but again, that's not normally in my sphere that I run in, aren't, you know, aren't the LinkedIn crew. So, um, or anyone else is doing reviews. I think the guy goes, aren't you a review guy? Don't you guys have a review strategy that you guys have in place? Yeah, we do. Um, as far as the B2B side, I'll tell you, I'll talk about it in a second. But as far as the B2B side, I think you're right. If I didn't have a LinkedIn profile, I don't know how recruiters would be able to find me. So it's good that I have one. <laughs> That's the reason not to have a LinkedIn profile. I'm telling you, really... it is almost like, geez, how do I turn that off? Anyway, um, the, um, uh, the, um, we're using a product called. I actually did. Well, back to LinkedIn very quickly. I used. I, I did. I did this once, and I had. I did what. What uh, was talking about. I sent. I sent out several. This is when I was still producing, and actually, um, so I sent out several um, testimonials. And you're right. LinkedIn asks for the response, and I got lots of responses. But I. I don't know. I don't know what it did. I mean, I don't no no. I. I wouldn't tell you that it. Like oh man, it made such a difference, and and again I don't produce anymore. So the um, uh, so that's been uh, that was several years ago. But I did have I did get other people to give me testimonials. So in that regard, I guess it was successful. Um, uh, we use a product in uh, that's just been fantastic for us. It's called Social Survey, and it's a uh, it's a tool that you you've got to uh, plug into your system and this is for getting surveys back from clients and uh, we've just been very successful getting them and um, uh, we're continuing to I'm trying to do everything we can to make sure that we get a high return I mean I think we're one of the higher returned um, uh, surveys that they have we're in like the 60 percent range and, and and that's I guess that's a pretty good number for being able to get surveys back but uh, uh, but that's been it doesn't do a b2b one so i can't send one they don't have an they don't have a platform for sending it to a real estate agent which i would find extremely valuable we still survey our real estate agents out of our crm uh, halfway through the transaction they get a they get an email from me and then at the end of the transaction they also get one as well but they're not we're not able to electronically collate the data like we can with the social survey product but i would encourage people to check out social survey it's very powerful yeah, so a couple thoughts on this topic. So, by the way, the social survey folks are friends of Mortgage Coach. Uh, they actually recently released a, you know, who are the 25 highest reviewed mortgage professionals. And, and again, social survey is trending. I mean, they've got a very big footprint. I don't want to represent their member base, but it's thousands of loan officers are using it. And and the 20 best, I think you had a couple people from your shop that had the highest reviews. So. Three. Um, two, three, yeah, three, three, but okay. who's counting? Yeah, um, yeah. No, yeah, I was very proud of that. Out of twenty-five, I think it was over over ten thousand loan officers nationally, and fifty thousand over fifty thousand reviews nationally. We had three in the top twenty, three loan officers that were in the top twenty-five uh, highest reviewed nationally. So, yeah. So I mean, that's super impressive, and speaks well to your organization, Dave. And by the way. I, I can't remember if it was 40 or 50% of the 20 loan officers that were the best in the country were on the mortgage coach team. So it was also something. Yeah, you had we were pretty proud. We, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were pretty proud of that. Um, you know, so by the way, I endorse that. If anybody wants an introduction to the executive team or, you know, the leader over there, email me, Dave, at mortgagecoach.com, and I'll be happy to make a, a C level introduction um, to the social survey team. Uh, we, we think really highly of that product. We think very highly of that company. Um, I, I do want to, you know, speak to um, LinkedIn real quick. So on two thoughts, one person posted in questions, uh, Toma, thank you, uh, said, hey, follow this person. I'm not going to try to say their name, but said this person is a LinkedIn expert. Um, again, I'm just taking uh, – 
Toma's word for it. I, I don't know this person, um, but if anybody wants to check them out on Facebook, they, this was a recommendation from another community member on today's call. Uh, I mean, my, my take on LinkedIn is, uh, you know, I, we use it a lot because we're selling to executives, you know, B2B. And so it's a great place to research people that we're getting ready to get on the phone call with and, you know, just know how credible they are. So, I mean, I, I do think, you know, if you have a client who uses LinkedIn, they're going to check you out on LinkedIn. So, I mean, I, I, I hear you on the recruiter piece. You know, recruiters, you know, overuse it in a way that's annoying and distracting. But, you know, if you are a mortgage professional and you don't have, let's just call it a professional uh, resume on there, you know, it, it will hurt you. You know, I mean, is it going to be a big miss? I don't know. I mean, that probably depends on what market you're in. Like if you're in Seattle, uh, and you're servicing a pretty high-tech community, I think it's probably a massiveness. And if you're, you're not in a market that uh, services a big professional um, community like that, then it might be lesserness. Um, and then I also see LinkedIn very valuable if you're trying to build relationships outside of just realtors. You know, if you are trying to build relationships with CPAs, financial planners, um, if you're trying to work with the HR departments of local corporations, I would say not having a professional LinkedIn profile is, you know, it's a big mess, you know, if that is part of your strategy. Uh, and then and my last thought before we get off this topic is that in just about every single market, there are some realtors that are really using LinkedIn intelligently, and, and they're also typically pretty professional realtors. So, um, you know, I would, you know, for anybody, again, if you're someone that you just don't like LinkedIn, you don't have natural passion for it, you know, have it updated at a minimum requirement way. But if you're someone that, you know, likes to work with the kinds of folks that would be professionals in your community and serious about LinkedIn, I'd say it's a real opportunity for you to uh, not only have a great profile, but then go find out who are the agents and referral partners in your community that are using LinkedIn strategically. Um, I'm not going to teach you guys how to do that right now, but you know, there's, you should probably go find a YouTube video saying, you know, how to find executives in my local community, you know, whatever. Um, it's not hard. You know, there's search features that would allow you to do that. And then you could, you could target them. So I, I just would say there's, there's LinkedIn opportunity out there for folks. Um, I, and if anybody is an expert at it or anybody has passion around it, uh, jump in. Uh, Hey, Todd, we're 30 minutes into the call. I think uh, it was a great topic. It was a great takeaway. But anything else you want to unpack on this topic before we move on? You know, I would just throw out there as a, as a side note, um, Building Champions coach Michael Regan is a LinkedIn expert. At least he was back in the old days when, when he and I were originators together. He taught a lot of classes to loan officers and realtors on LinkedIn. And so my guess is, knowing Michael as I do, that he's probably still pretty knowledgeable. So if there was ever an opportunity in the mortgage coach community to, to offer uh, a webinar on that. You may be uh, a potential, a potential guest um, for sure. Yeah, I know Michael is great. Check out his profile. You can see that he's very active in how he updates it. And, uh, and then Todd, why don't you run that by Michael and see if you um, I could do that. I will be chatting with him today. So I will, uh, I will do that on behalf yeah, of no the more, entire mortgage coach community. Yeah, 20 minute um, TED talk on why should a mortgage professional care about LinkedIn and what are the what are the requirements for a LinkedIn savvy mortgage coach community vendor? How about that, brother? I like it a lot. So, you know, I forgot to give my my normal disclaimer at the very front of this call, which you know we've already alluded to. Right, this call is great when those of you who are sitting there plugged in and listening actually uh, interject, right? With, whether it's just a simple question, um, whether it's, it's just telling us like people did in the questions of who uh, we should follow on LinkedIn, uh, your feedback makes this, your involvement makes this call so much better. And then we always say too, there's no spoilers. If you're at the beginning part of insane productivity and you've got obviously Dave uh, Bliss, myself and others who are, uh, I would call probably ninjas, we've all been through it enough, that uh, you know we we're 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 pretty top notch. Don't feel like we're going to spoil anything for you. We we absolutely can't, and there's just no way to no way to possibly do that. But it's always uh, great when we 
uh, empower any of you to jump on and, and give your uh, two cents, give your feedback. Um, and oftentimes feedback, again, we already started off with, with uh, Dave Gallegos' struggle, right? Trying to get back back on the horse, get, you know, get back, get back going. But, um, yeah, I love it. I love it. What, um, you know, without the last two weeks, so were there any, any hanging topics, Dave, from the last two weeks that you guys started on that you didn't get to that we would want to jump on and run with today? You know, there probably is, but I don't remember it. So I would throw that back to the audience. I see some familiar names. Uh, hey, Blitz, before I bring someone else in, any last comments or questions? Uh, back no, on you. I, I love the direction that it's all taking. And so, yeah, it's awesome. Just to be able to glean knowledge from people that are not necessarily our competitors every time. Oh, actually, I do want to say one thing. I loved um, the idea a few weeks ago uh, Michelle in San Diego shared that she gives the um, Bernstein Bears book Moving Day as a gift. So, in fact, probably while we were on that call, even though I shouldn't multitask, I think I jumped onto Amazon, ordered 10 copies, and I have given a couple of away since then. Parents love it. Love it. So, we're nice. talking, you know, 4 or $5. I wrap it up, you know, and I put my sticker on the on it, and I said, you know, I say, hey, this is for your kids. Give it to them when you get home. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to just little nuggets like that that we draw out of these kind of mastermind sessions. It's priceless. Now, thank you for contributing. Thank you for taking action on the story, and thanks for bringing that energy back in. So if you get another question before the half hour is out and we wrap up today's call, raise your hand, and we'll bring it back in. Sound good? We'll do. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. So, hey, uh, Andrew Adams. What's up, my man? I have unmuted you, Andrew. How you doing? Well, I was hoping we were going to be able to hear from Andrew Adams, a uh, great mortgage coach uh, for many, many years. You know, he went to Wells Fargo for a period, and now he's back in the the, the mortgage coach sector. Uh, Andrew, if you do get a chance to unmute yourself or – get a mic. I would love, back in the day, I interviewed you a lot around how you were using Zillow. And I mean, it's, if I remember correctly, you were generating just a number of loans every single month from Zillow. So uh, I've, I've unmuted you. And one more chance. Andrew, are you there? Okay. I've got to put Andrew back on mute. Uh, if you do get a topic or a thought, let us know what it is, my friend. Uh, Lazar, I see that you have a question. Any any questions or comments, Lazar? I have you unmuted. All right, we're we're not having good luck with this. Uh, putting you back on mute, Lazar. If you do get available, jump back in. Uh, let's see, Scott Morris. Scott, are you there, my friend? I'm here. How are you doing? Any 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 questions? Any questions or topics for today from you? Yeah, I've got a topic. I I am um, this year's been a fantastic metamorphosis for me, but I think I have too many balls in the air. And um, really, a question for the group is: What CRM is commonly used, or do people like, or is most efficient? And uh, I've been using my own CRM with my Outlook and my Franklin Planner, and I'm doing pretty well with it. But I'm getting a little overwhelmed with it, and need to really buckle down, bear down, and get a, a, a clean operating system for myself to follow up and, you know, keep track of who I'm calling and texting and, you know, gotten all these fantastic ideas from the group and uh, I'm implementing a lot of them. They're being successful for me, but I'm just feeling like I need to be able to measure it better than I am. Love it, Scott. Great question. I just posted that in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group. So, Scott would like to know what CRM you are using. Um, if anybody wants to raise their hand or add some value right now, feel free. But um, please, by the way, please post that in the YouTube group. Lazar just posted that he's using Top of Mind. But uh, Lazar, if you don't mind also putting that in our Facebook group just so it kind of gives life after today's call, I would uh, really appreciate that. Uh, and then, uh, Andrew Adams, I noticed that you are in a place with a lot of background music uh, or background noise, but you're using Salesforce. If you could post that also in, um, in the chat here. It uh, looks like Dave Gallegos is using Cimarron. 
Um, so I would just, I'll answer that with a little bit of commentary. Uh, you know, Jungo, which is a Salesforce platform, I hear a lot in the mortgage coach community. Um, I hear Velma a lot, has an integration with us. Um, you know, obviously I hear Top of Mind a lot. I hear Cimarron. You know, by the way, we're, we're rolling out a new integration with Cimarron. Um, and most of the, just about every CRM either has an integration with a mortgage coach or, you know, in Top of Mind's case, they're working on an integration with mortgage coach. So, you know, to me, the best CRM is the one that you use. Uh, you know, they all have things that are super special and brilliant. Each one has something they do better than everyone else. And each one has something that they're, you know, weak at or they're not the best at. But uh, the CRM that you actually use every single day, every single week to do what matters most is the CRM that's the best. Um, Todd, anything you want to add to that CRM question from Scott? No, you, you stole my punchline. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt. It's whatever system works. And if it's we at the last uh, Masters Coach where we had a, a focus on, um, you know, on productivity and, and all around um, that idea of priority management. And we had a, a top producer panel, which are, you know, was put, up, put together with many of the people, a couple who are part of the insane productivity mortgage coach community, um, and then a couple of the people who you've had on as, as guests. And you literally had people on there who were still using the old day timer, and that was their CRM. And then you had the opposite end, you know, with Josh Metal, who's just Mr., you know, everything is, is on a system. And, and so it, I totally agree. It's whatever, whatever you use and you hit the nail on the head. There's no perfect system. It's kind of like mortgage companies. There's a lot of great ones, but there's none that are perfect. And so um, in the end, I, I always uh, coach people through, you know, do a quick test run. Uh, you're never going to be able to ferret out all the limitations, but you know, you kind of have to have a list of, you know, these are the top five things, top 10 things that are non-negotiables, make sure that it does those things well. And then the, always the asterisk that I have is the custom, the customization piece and thinking through how customizable is it. My team runs a custom Salesforce platform. And, you know, so again, we come up with an idea and say, hey, let's, you know, we need a field for, you know, did we send a closing gift or whatever that would be. We can go in there five minutes later and we can add it in our system where that's oftentimes a limitation of others. And then as a former regional recruiting manager uh, overseeing lots of loan officers, you always have the compliance answer, which is oftentimes um, I'm seeing companies now that are almost requiring you to use their system. And there are a lot of great company integrations as well. And um, although there's some limitations from a customization standpoint, um, you have, you know, typically huge lift where it's integrated in with your loan system and they've got a lot of drip emails and a lot of the other stuff that loan officers want to do, but don't set up the jam sessions to implement. And, um, and so you always have to go through the compliance side of things and in most cases uh, for better or worse to, to make sure that your company's on board with whatever you're doing. That wasn't too much of a downer, was it, to throw the compliance thing in there, Dave? <laughs> no, not, not, a, not at all, brother. But I, I did want to show a slide right now because, you know, I think this really says it all. You know, when you, when you look at technology, it's more advanced than how much we use it. And, and technology is improving rapidly, you know, I mean, the capabilities. So I, I would just emphasize the fact that, the, you know, the best CRM is the one that you use and, and, and where you're constantly getting better at using it. Um, that did bring up a, a thought that I think, Todd, I'll, I'll ask you to second the idea, but I, I'm going to recommend that we, we do invite some guests to talk about CRM. You know, we could invite um, people from actual CRMs I don't want to turn it into a demo fest, but, you know, to share best practices. Um, and or we could invite loan officers that are just, uh, you know, lights out at CRM, and we could invite them to, to share best practices. So I don't think it's an either or idea, but I, I throw it out to the community. Would you like us to, uh, you know, invite some guests and dedicate some, some time to talk about, you know, how are the best of the best using CRM? Todd, do you second that idea? I love it. And again, you know, always the challenge is every person who's on there, whether they work or own the CRM company or they're just a loan officer using it, they're going to be doing a commercial for it. But in the end, everyone will have to get past that and just listen to the best practice portion. Um, that's awesome. And it comes back to that jam session thing, right? My, you know, my on-time folder that sat on my desk as a loan officer um, always had a section in there that was for Salesforce because it was one of those things if I ever ran out of ideas or something I could work on, I always had opportunity to go in and learn something more about how to be more effective with our CRM or 
go in there and create some new workflow or some new way to make it easier for me as a loan officer or for one of my team members to do business. Love it, my friend. So, uh, so if anybody else has thoughts or ideas on that, let us know. And if you have someone that you would like us to interview or bring in the call to, you know, talk about how CRM is used and what are some best practices, let Todd and I know. And um, we will off, offline figure out who we want to invite and how we want to bring that into the future calls. But I do think it's can a just, super important can I topic. Add let me just add something on the CRM piece here. Um, bring it just recently did a um, we had a couple of we had a loan officers that aren't here anymore we have a designation in our database called the not yet people that are in a not yet status that just means they weren't able to get a loan yet that doesn't mean it's dead it means that we just got to keep following up and coach them through the process there's so much money in follow-up it's astounding so we, we, we parsed out we had, had 150 names of people over the last maybe four or five years that we handed out to some new people that were training and each loan officer got 30 names and I'm not exaggerating <laughs> of those 30 names this is not an exaggeration everyone had at least 10 people that had gone on and gotten a mortgage not from us out of 30 that's 33 percent of those names and every one of the loan officers that didn't get that business just 10 loans our average loan amounts 300 grand now that's three million dollars worth of production do the math on what you get paid and think about the significance of the dollars that are involved and that's why CRM is so powerful when I first started this branch back in 2000 I mean I, that was like the first thing we did is uh, we got to have a database because I did all the companies I'd worked for up to that point didn't have one and I knew I wanted one and so it's such a powerful concept and I think we just miss it and um, Everybody asks, you know, loan officers are always asking, how can I do more business? How can I go call everybody every, you know, call your database? And you can't just, there's so much, there's so many ways to connect now without a phone call that people have defaulted to not picking up the phone. And I know that texting works and the millennials and all of that stuff, but phone calls are gold. And um, uh, to think that I mean, I, there were there were five lists. That's I'm I'm sick to my stomach thinking about the 50 transactions over a period of time that we just missed out on here because people didn't do their follow up, and that's so critical. And my best my best producer, you got a picture of him up right now, is a guy by the name of Giuseppe Badalioli. Uh, he's got the biggest database. He's got the most past clients. Giuseppe never leaves the day without clear, clearing out every task that is assigned to him in that CRM. He's better at it than everyone else who, who aren't nearly as busy because he understands the connections and the, and the follow-up. That's where the gold is. The gold's in the follow-up. It's really powerful. So to, to, to echo everything Todd and Dave both just said, master your database. And it doesn't really matter which one. You just got to ma but, but master that tool. That's the advice is master it. Don't just be okay at it. You got to master it because there's so much value in it. Yeah, I love it. I, I applaud that. And it, go, go ahead. I was no, I just applaud that. I mean, I think I think that's the the number one thing that I've I've seen through this journey that I've been on since we started this insane the productivity piece almost a year ago. It was is studying these top producers and not just in the mortgage world, but ultimately the people who have a that conviction, right? That that don't tolerate the interruptions. That actually have a commitment. Um, and a conviction around following up on everything that they're supposed to do before they get distracted and to react and to, you know, take on everyone else's monkeys are the ones who seem to be at the highest level of success. Because what I heard you say, Dave, was that he is the best at it and he's the busiest. And so normally people use the fact that I'm busy as the excuse not to actually uh, follow up with excellence. And here you go. You've got someone who's built it into their day where it's a conviction that I'm going to clear every one of these follow-ups before I go. Um, and lo and behold, he's your number one producer. Hmm. Well, and it's, what's really funny about this is that, okay, so you talk to somebody, somebody raises their hand and they want to get a mortgage. Why do you think they did that? Because they want to get a mortgage. And so if, 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 if they can't now or, they, or they're not interested or they, you know, they can't find a home and, they, and they, go, they sign a new lease or whatever it is, they're going to get a mortgage at some point and they talk to you. You should get that deal by default. You just should, but not if you don't follow up. You don't deserve it, right? 
I mean, because we always get, it's crushing when you find out that somebody went and got, oh yeah, I just closed. Because we've all had that happen. I know I've had it happen to me. And one of the, oh yeah, I just closed last week. I, I like, oh, I meant to call you. It's like, why didn't you, what, we talked. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I did, it's been a while. And my fault, that was my fault. That's not their fault, that's my fault. And that's how you have to look at it. And so, yeah, there's gold in the follow-up. So what so type of couple, schedule then, Dave, is your branch doing on follow-up? Like, so someone applies now and says, I'm not going to buy. I'm, I'm, I'm buying, but maybe not for the next 90 days to six months. Are you guys following up weekly, every couple of weeks? What does that look like in your branch? That customer would go into a, so we have a not, we have statuses and then we have a status description. So not yet can cover, there's a whole bunch of reasons why somebody's not moving forward. But whatever it is, depending on, their, so there's a green, yellow, and there's a red, yellow, and green follow-up campaign that will determine how often you're getting a reminder to check in with that client. And then the mistake is clearing the task and not checking in. So a green would be following up more frequently. I believe it's every two weeks. Red, yellow is every 30 days and, and red is every 60 days or something, something like that. There's just a different, there's a different frequency pattern. And do you think um, most people are making a phone call or are they going to default to the, to the email? Laziness. I think the best performers are making phone calls. That's what I think. And I could be wrong because they might have talked to somebody and there might have been an email exchange a few days ago or something like that. And so they'll just send another email. It, 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 but, but for the most part, that's a phone call. Hey, just yeah, checking I, I in. And you know, you don't always get them on the phone, but you just, hey, I'm just checking in. Wanted to make sure everything's going okay. Didn't want you to think I, I just wanted to make sure if there's, if you need anything, I'm here. Let me know. Give me a call. Email, whatever. You know, it's just, it's follow up. It's just follow up. Yeah, so, hey Todd, guys, I want to. always said if if they don't follow up, if you don't follow up with them, they won't follow up with you. I'm sorry, Dave. Right. Go ahead. That's an old. Yeah, that's a Todd. Is that a Todd Duncan line? I don't know, but that's that's yep. like I learned that very early on. Yeah, well, that's a. I think that's a line of a lot of sales trainers and trail, sales leaders because it's it's a truth. You know, there's there's certain things that the best loan officers and the best salespeople they just do, and that you know that's follow up is one of those things. I I do want to shine a light on the fact that I shared a few um, educational resources. So I shared that interview with Giuseppe, uh, again, an insanely productive mortgage professional. Um, and I, I, rather than calling him a loan officer, I called him a leader because, you know, that's what Giuseppe is. He's a leader. He leads a team, and anybody that meets him, they just know that they are meeting with someone who's a leader. So, again, great example of someone insanely productive. Um, I put both my interviews with Chris Smith. He wrote a book called The Conversion Code. And, I mean, the guy, to me, is just a complete rock star when it comes to lead conversion. Um, you know, that, the full one-hour interview to me is a must-watch, but I, I got a 15-minute piece that was just all about, you know, how to be insanely productive at getting people on the phone and into a conversation. And Chris, you know, one, he, he makes the case that you got to follow up six-plus times. That's where the magic is. But he also made a really good case that it's not just about the phone, you know, especially in today's world, and it's not just about phone and email. It's about phone, email, and text. And I'm not going to steal thunder from the call. I would just recommend that everybody, you know, if you want to be insanely productive at getting prospects on the phone or getting realtors on the phone, you know, listen in on that interview that we did. It would, it, I think it would be helpful for you. Um, so, Todd, we are less than 10 minutes left to go on the call. Uh, any other topics or any, you know, your, your coach, anything you could do to help us really take action on some of the ideas of today's call? You know, I, I would think that there's a, there's a couple of things. I would certainly pile on to your idea of watching the Chris Smith interview. I, I, I've been digging your little Skype calls that you're doing. I especially love seeing your family walking back and forth behind. I, I love that, uh, you know, Dave is a real person. His, his family's all there. So that's, uh, that's always fun to watch. But I think that, uh, I, I think that one in particular was great. I, I took notes from it. I actually uh, was up. Uh, one morning when I was in Greece and I, uh, my family was asleep and I, I clicked in and I, I, I watched uh, a couple of the interviews uh, that you did and I actually clicked through and watched a couple of his own things. So there's, there's great value there. And so, you know, I guess the whole key when it comes to action plans off this call is, is that there's always ideas on this call. And the question is, is that what resonated with you, number one, and then number two is what are you going to do about it? And so you heard Bliss say, hey, I struggle with jam sessions. And, you know, in the end, 
I mean, I think that you could pull, you know, 100 people in insane productivity and 98 or 99 of them are going to say they struggle with, with jam sessions. And so I always think the best time for a jam session is anytime you're coming out of a coaching call. So if it was me and I was in your seat, I would, I would be blocking this time every Friday morning for an hour to get on this call and, and get ideas. And really, you only need one idea off the call or maybe two um, and a couple of reminders of things that, you know, that you already thought about. And then I would actually be scheduling a jam session, you know, minimum of 30 minutes, but I think ideally 60 minutes or more coming off of this call to actually figure out how to implement those jam sessions. If nothing else, you know, I would be having a jam session folder on your desk with a pad of paper at the top of it where you can at least write in there these ideas because ultimately, I mentioned it before, most people forget what uh, they don't know what they should work on when it's when it's time, and so you just have to, as you get these ideas, write them down, and then just know, you know, great. I love Bliss's idea about doing real tour testimonials. She already told you she's going to do it during her jam session um, a few times a week. Great. So then sit down when you get off this call, and then write out what would that look like for you, right? How would I do it? Who would I do it for? Take Dave Gallegos's idea, create a template for it, right? You can sort of customize it a little bit. Um, in the end, right, the likelihood that uh, that your client who's looking at all these different realtors is ever going to see your testimonial to realize that they're almost the same is probably pretty pretty slim. Um, you know, think through some of the other topics that we talked about today, right? CRM is always going to be a huge topic for loan officers, right? How are you using your CRM? Um, you know, CRM switching is such a uh, mess. There's, you know, again, you lose a ton of traction every time you switch. And so um, I often uh, discourage the shiny object of, oh my gosh, I heard, you know, Dave talk about Simmer on that. Let's check that out, right? And so I always say, let's look at what you have first. How can you use it more effectively? Spend some time on that as a great action plan um, before you say, oh, let me go off and, and try this new thing that I heard about today. Um, morning routine, evening routine. Again, that's where we started the call with uh, with, with Dave talking about the fact that he needs a tune-up on his evening routine. And again, as clinical as it sounds, it's something that you can write out. When I actually look at my life plan in there under my health account, I actually have what my morning and evening routine um, ideally look like um, because I need a reminder of it. You know, I, you just forget, even though I do it all the time. That's, for me, an easy way to, to get back on task. And so, you know, I just think ultimately in the end, there's always so much gold in here on these calls. And the question is, is are you actually going to do anything with what you hear? Um, and, and it's it's tough, right? I mean, I've, I've been uh, I've been on, on your side of the of the phone before, you know, originator for 15 plus years um, and coaching so many originators now. And I hear it again, whether it's, you know, my my clients in their mid to late 20s who are newer in the business and just struggling to get their business going to, you know, some of my, some of my rock star, you know, clients. Um, closing ridiculous numbers of transactions. I mean, everyone's got those same challenges that, that you have. And so, you know, I just say, get something done. Execute one thing as you come off of this call. And then, you know, again, as, as Dave said, we're getting ready to open this up to the whole mortgage coach community. So we would love you guys to uh, maybe share it as Dave starts posting out there on social media over the next couple of weeks uh, that we're doing this call on Fridays. If you would, wouldn't mind sharing it so that we can get uh, your friends on this call. Um, I would just love to get more more dialogue going each week. I think that's the one thing that we've struggled with over the past couple months is, is you guys raising your hands. Dave, Dave's done a good job of empowering you guys and picking on people, but, um, but it's always great when you guys come thinking, you know what, today, this week I struggled with, um, you know, interruptions, right? I, I tolerated interruptions or, you know, this week I struggled with, um, you know, my jam sessions, whatever it is, whether you think it's basic or not, it always comes in and, in likes the conversation because someone else is thinking that they're um, they're having the same the same challenges that you're having. Uh, what did I miss, Dave? Either Dave. Yeah. Well, a um, couple thoughts. So one, there are questions that we didn't get to. We've only got four minutes left. I'm not going to start a new topic. Uh, any questions? Feel free to put the post these in our Facebook group. So everybody that's listening to this, whether you're on the recording or you're on the live call right now, um, we have this private group to have a dialogue share ideas and thoughts. Uh, I want to remind folks that we, I, I thought a big idea that could really drive a lot of effectiveness was what, you know, we started the call with where Bliss is writing these testimonials for realtors. So please share examples. I think this would be something that would be a great way as a community for us to see how other mortgage professionals are honoring agents. 
and then leveraging that. So let's keep that dialogue going. Um, again, if you're listening to the recording, you know, go in and let us know what CRM you're using. And, and know that Todd and I will put some thought into how we can bring in and have conversation around CRM and future calls. You know, I, I'm with Todd. You know, switching CRMs is tough, and most of the time uh, loan officers just aren't using the one they have at, at even a bare minimum requirements level. So, you know, make sure you're using the CRM that you have. But I also, you know, all CRMs are not equal. You know, there are CRMs that are better than others, and there are CRMs that you know, one might be better for one person based off of their business goals, their business strategies, their personality, and there could be a CRM that's better for the, a different person. You know, so not there's, there's there's no one CRM that's just the best CRM for all people and all purposes. Um, but with that said, I think we talked a lot about it. Uh, I would love you know if if you do go and you do take us up on any of the homework that we assigned, let us know. You know, like it at least if you're going to watch this Chris Smith video at least give us a like so we know that you're engaged. And, and remember the goal, the reason Todd and I take time out of our day on Fridays is to create impact. You know, we, you know, that's what we both live for is helping people take their business to a higher level, you know, growth and impact. So if we're helping you grow, if we are providing impact, let us know, you know, clue us in so that we know that. Uh, Toma, uh, while I didn't get all your questions answered, really appreciate your engagement and questions in the chat of GoToWebinar. Uh, I did approve you in the Facebook group, and I will unmute you in future calls. So come back. Uh, we will make sure you uh, would love to have you as an active member of our community. Uh, Bliss, thank you for jumping in. Andrew Adams, we'll, we'll get you live next time. Scott, thank you for your contributions. And then, of course, Dave Gallegos, you know, it's great having your voice on this call, brother, and great having the ideas that you share. Uh, any closing well, I thoughts got, you, Dave? I get as much as I give, so I, this is, I'm getting way more than I give, actually, so thank you for having me, and um, um, it's a pleasure to be back. I'm glad. It's just going to help me. I'm going to be more productive. I'm going to just keep doing it, so. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we're going to have a, a bigger group um, next week. Uh, Coach Todd, any? I'll let you close out today's call. Any closing thoughts? You know, my my only closing thought is when you one of the beauties of of Dave's YouTube channel is is that you I've said it before, but you can actually speed it up, right? If you click that little dial, two times speed. I had to slow down a couple times on Chris Smith because he kind of talks fast occasionally, but <laughs> uh, but it's a great way to to these tutorials. Is you're like, oh gosh, I don't have 15 minutes to listen to Dave's call. You know, I call I call you out on that. You do because you can actually do it in seven and a half minutes instead, and you can just crank crank through it. And um, again, it always takes me a little bit longer because I pause it, I take notes, I rewind, and then you know, again, think through how are you going to make that actionable, right? It's great if you take the time to listen to it, but once you take those ideas down, and you could leave those calls with ten ideas, right? So narrow that down to just one or two that you're going to execute on on now. So and so, I think that's the key right there. So. Um, I say that's it, right? Let's uh, let's call this one a wrap. Um, appreciate everyone um, being here. Dave Guy goes great uh, catching up with you again. Dave Savage, always uh, thanks for what you do for the Mortgage Coach community, and really thanks to all of you for taking time to be here. Um, like Dave said, engage with the Facebook group, um, invite your friends, and uh, show up next week with uh, some more questions and and uh, maybe some ideas of other things that we can talk about. Have all right, everybody, week. have a have a great week weekend. Take care. Thanks, guys.